Hey, everybody. Um, let's pull this over here. Um, we'll probably get started soon. I very nicely asked Jungle Man to be on time today. Uh, actually, give me one, one second. Where's that screen? Sorry. Sorry about that. I had to make sure that uh, as I opened my uh, texts that uh, they were not directly on screen. Um, okay. So we'll get started soon. Um, I mentioned in here, throw a couple questions in, but you got to be fast because I think we're starting in four minutes. Um, so we'll start with this one from Andy Mitch. Hey, Phil, you said yesterday you didn't always feel like you'd prepped to play your A game in this challenge uh, before streams. What would prepping to play A game actually look like? Uh, go well, thank you. Um, so prepping to play my A game, I would actually have a full, so I wouldn't do anything in the morning. I mean, not that I did that much this morning actually, because I, all right, well, here's what I wouldn't do. So last night it was my wife's birthday. Um, I drank, which I basically drink like once every two months. Uh, and then I woke up at 3.30 a.m. because of that. So uh, I would not do that. Um, and then I kind of just wasted some time on my phone. I hung out with my son once he woke up. And uh, then started preparing for this. And I actually did uh, jot down a... I, had a... I have a document that I made to kind of just gather my thoughts on how I've been playing and how jungle's been playing so far to see if I could make some not even I mean somewhat exploits but also just correct my my leaks that I think he's he's pouncing on um, because I've gone into these into these sessions without you know my full level of focus that uh, I would normally have so um I mean that was slightly I don't know that was probably helpful <laughs> uh, let me do that again I just want to make sure this opens where I want it to. You'll still be able to see me. I think that's where I want it. Um, and I will sit down just so that when he does arrive, we are ready to go. Um, but I guess I'll put this over here for now. But um, what I would normally do, so I would wake up after a good night of sleep, um, spend a little time with my family. I would then do some sort of light exercise. Um, from who, from people I've talked to, it seems like doing a, an intense exercise, like uh, weightlifting, like a lot before you start a session is not good for your, like you tire out your mind a little bit or your body, which then tires out your mind. But doing some like light cardio. Um, and then, I mean, in some, in some bigger matches, I would have actually like, two to four days a week, a, a, a 15 minute session with Elliot Rowe, my mindset coach before the sessions where he just gets my head on straight. Um, and then other days, uh, I might listen to one of his MP3s or do some other sort of meditation. I think it's, I think what's important that, um, that like you don't get from other meditation is setting some, I guess, I, I guess you call it intentions for the session, just getting in, your, getting in, uh, not like, I don't mean wishing things into existence, like I'm going to run good. Uh, but I mean, doing things like, I don't know why that popped down there. Uh, doing things like, you know, I'm going to be focused today. I'm going to take this seriously. I'm going to, uh, hand read. I'm not going to make snap decisions, things like that. Uh, I find it really helpful to whether you're listening to an MP3 or a coach telling you those things, or you are saying them, like you have a list of them that you say out loud, or you're writing them down, I think all of that is very helpful to get you in the right mindset. Uh, one last question. Good luck so far today. Has been has he been more difficult than I foresaw? Yeah, he has actually. Um, would I accept a match against Action Freak? Um, well, sort of. Uh, if you play, if I could play him from here, I would. But I'm not gonna. 
travel again for that match. All right. So as I mentioned uh, in previous streams, if you haven't watched, I'm going to mostly have the chat off, uh, except during, I don't know, breaks in the action. Um, but I in previous streams, I had had subscriber only chat on because I didn't want like super fast chat. But I realized even that was was really distracting. So I turned that off so everybody can chat. Uh, although I do encourage you to subscribe if you've been watching multiple of these streams or if you watch my other videos and you enjoy them. Um, subscribing is a uh, win-win. But uh, everybody can chat, and I, I encourage you to chat with each other. And I will... Uh, so I believe, yeah, Moonlight Master is in here once again. Thank you, Moonlight. And uh, if there are any kind of major points that people wanted to get me to address or answer, he'll let me know after the session and... Um, that hasn't happened yet, by the way. That's mostly just been, you know, conversation about the hands. Um, although he may be saving it for after the three sessions. But anyways, um, if there's something like that, he'll let me know. And what was I going to say? Yeah, and then maybe I'll, you know, either tweet about it or make a video about it, um, whatever, too. So, so I don't discourage you from chatting to me in order to, uh, you know, just because I, I'm not going to see it immediately. Um, and I actually have the, the first one I went back and I read through the chat, uh, afterwards. So that's also a possibility. So yes, uh, questions to me are good, but also, uh, chat with each other enjoy the show. Um, jungle man is a really exciting, fun opponent to play against. He puts me to the test in a lot of ways that, uh, other opponents don't because he's kind of just very willing to, well, he's just willing to go for it in a lot of spots. Um, but in a, I, I don't think necessarily in a bad way, but in a, in a balanced way where some people kind of let fear dictate their play in, in some circumstances. Um, when I played my challenge against, uh, Chance Corneth, that was also a scenario where I felt challenged in new ways and actually Chance, like both Chance and Jungle compared to a lot of my other opponents are less theoretically sound, I would say but um, but more creative. And so they tested me in different ways than, than I'm used to uh, used to being tested. So uh, let's see while we're waiting for Dan the man. Um, your problem, how do US players who play unregulated sites declare taxes fail? You should just declare your winnings. Um, I mean, everybody knows the it was Al Capone, right? The Al Capone story, how they, they got him for tax evasion. Um, yeah, you just, the, the, the IRS doesn't care if you play on unregulated sites. They don't care at all. So just say that you, uh, I don't know if you have to specify. You might have to specify uh, what sites you played on. You might not. But then just uh, state your winnings and pay taxes accordingly, and um, and you'll be good. Max says, uh, hey, Phil, one thing I'd like to know more about from you is how rake affects win rates in live games. If a 2-5 game is 10% rake with $10, $10 cap, how much is a winning player going to be raking hourly? To be honest, rake calculations have never been my strong suit because I uh, I played sit and goes for a long time, which have the, uh, like, st you know exactly what the rake is. Um, and then, and you know what your ROI is compared to the rake after you have a reasonable sample. Um and then I started playing cash games when I already had a pretty big bankroll from sit and goes. So I started playing cash games at 510 and still was not aware of rake. It wasn't a huge deal, but I wasn't aware of it. And then by the time I was playing 2550, 5100, I started to become more aware, aware of rake and the impacts, but rake was not high there. Um, I mean, today it is on some sites, but it wasn't back then. So off the top of my head, I don't have a good answer. It's something that if I stepped away and did some calculations, I could uh, come up with something. But I, I, there are a lot of uh, people who play in games like that or play, I mean, play 510 in general, play uh, actually like basically everybody who's a professional that plays, um, actually probably everybody's a professional now, um, uh, except for me, is pretty good at... Um, analyzing rake from that perspective. Um, all right. Appreciate you all. I know there are other things you could be doing with your time. I'm 
and I hope to make it worth your while. And uh, I will talk to you when I talk to you. Uh, left table, easy call. Don't need to do much raising on this board in general, just on ASI boards. Oh, let me get check two, which is interesting. I would hate to bet fold this, but. Hmm. I think it's close there. Okay. I'm not going to be calling with king eight. Although I do wonder what he's repping. He's repping like ace nine plus, I guess. Here, I think we, betting the turn, like king 10 without clubs, I think I would more, more often check than bet. King 10 with clubs, I'd more often bet than check, but I think he's a good candidate to like value bet, get him to value bet tooth in or bluff or something and save a lot of money against that, which I guess was check raising and I was not folding. Uh, interesting one here. We'll start with a call. And uh, if he turns spot coming up, if we face a big bet, because this makes a really good check raise hand, but you know, if he's like potting, it's a weird stack to pot ratio for check raising this level of equity. Um, a check. Queen seven, standard. You can check a hand like that back, but you know, you don't have to. You might need to remember to update results periodically, which means I'll also need the lobby open. Um, I'm gonna, let, let's see, I started at 22. I'll, I'll update, like, I was kind of updating a little too obsessively in previous sessions. I'd like to really focus in. I think a small bet rather than pot so that I can value bet like a three comfortably, can value bet a six more comfortably. If I pot, it gets a little dicier. Here, it's a little too weak. Um, okay. Five rivers, interesting. I think I just check and probably lose. And here I also check. I think it's a little too thin. He's going to be checking. Like, he's checking back all of his flushes on the turn. He's going to have flushes quite a bit. I don't see a good reason to call here. And he'll definitely play flushes this way. He'll play some trips this way. That turned into a boat. I mean, I don't think he's value betting trips now, but... You know, it's not out of the question. Right table either way on the flop. Um, left table, I'm going to fold. I don't block much. That's very useful. Here I'll bet this hand needs some protection a little more so than the king 10. I mean, the king 10 would have been a good bet too. Showdown. He goes for the sneaky check call with queen six. I respect that. Jungle Man is, is tricky. He's sneaky. He's aggressive. He's all the things. I raise a limp on the left. Easy bet. Right table. Do I want to check call or do I want to bet? Check call. I don't think I, I don't think raising makes sense. And I think I have to call river a few bets, but quickly checks probably improved. Yep. He hit an ace. Um, check back Kings. 
Whoops, sorry about that. <clears throat> Just trying to be able to show you his hand. Um, he had ace king, whatever, whatever. King queen, seven three is just a full. Here we're facing a small bet. Goes pretty thinly for value, but I'm a little suspicious for some reason. And getting a good price. I mean, he had it. He had exactly, you know, what he was repping, but I don't know. Right table, could bet, could check. Uh, Moonlight. Shout out Moonlight, pointing out that I need to fix my cam. Thank you. Ooh. And now I got to check. I, I I don't actually check range on the nine, but I think this is a very good checking hand, and I check quite a bit. Now I'm going to lock my cam, my cam so I don't move it by accident. Um, I don't think I should be folding this. He's going to keep firing on the left with a lot of stuff, but I mean, he can have it. I mean, I have a really bad calling hand, so I guess I'm gonna, <clears throat> I guess I'm gonna fold. This is an interesting one. I'm gonna go pot pot, I guess. Um, I do have a six, which has a tiny bit of showdown value, but three straights get there. I have a five and a ten. I have a flush draw, so this becomes a really good bluffing candidate. Call the three bet with sevens, flop a seven. Every session I started down, so maybe I I probably just jinxed it. I'm probably gonna I mean I'm I am down already, so. Um he checks. I'm not gonna slow play a set. He four bets. I don't think this is a fold, but it's pretty uncomfortable. And you are supposed to lead some here. I don't think this hand is a lead. Just mine's a check fold when I flop a set. And when I flop ace king, he that's tiny. I do kind of read this as strength, but I don't think I can fold to 340. I'll just need to hit the queen of spades, I guess. I don't think I get to donk turns here. Check call on the right. After I raise his limp, we'll be check calling turn unhappily, I think. What's going on? I kind of don't think he has, I think he won't believe that I have anything, but I also don't think he has anything. So I'm just kind of confused. Uh, King, King, Jack. Ah, for some reason, I just felt like, I feel like he'd slow down on this turn a little bit. I'm going to let this go. I'm really curious what he, what he had here. Uh, he's sitting out momentarily. We may never learn why. Oh, is this now? My camera's now covering. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. That's the bottom of the table.
He wants to pause to... He wants to pause, so he wants to put up some social uh, links. I guess he wants me to put it on Instagram. I don't have. I don't feel like anybody comes from my Instagram stories to to watch the stream, but. But. Uh... Let's see if he puts it on Instagram. I can just reshare. He's asking me what I folded. I had Ace Jack Nine Four. Um, doesn't seem like he did put it on Instagram. Okay, why? Well, I... I don't have an image. Yeah, I'm just going to wait till he posts and repost. Uh, I'll get to, I'll talk to you guys in the meantime. All right, so let's see. My master with the uh, a lot of a lot of comments. So appreciate you all being here and chatting. Again, I hope I put on a good show. Um, Exodia, hey Phil, I, regarding yesterday's session, I noticed that you're floating on flop a lot with gut shots and then folding turn. Um, on the other hand, you play your good hands too passive, always checking on the flop. So there's not a question there. Um, I think, I mean, I, I think I've been, a uh, slightly too passive in this match so far. Um, uh, Andrew Morales asks if he should talk hands or no. You can absolutely talk about hands. I'm not looking at the chat, um, except now when we're not playing and we're on a five minutes late each. So I'm never going to see, uh, you know, his hand. <clears throat> uh, I mean, even if, even if you were, even if I were looking at the chat, I wouldn't see his hand. Um, well, ta -ta 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 -ta. He's probably gonna get booted from the tables. I hope you're doing well. Chase the ace. Thank you very much. I guess I'll just throw this up here for a minute so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, be pad. So I'm down about five buy-ins. Yeah. Yeah, Topher says IRS doesn't care if you uh, commit non-monetary crimes. So yeah, better luck for you today. Thank you very much. Jungle finds bluffs in spots nobody else does. Yeah, he does. Uh, he definitely does. Trias. I have a weird question. Do you know anyone who has depression or other mental issues and is a successful poker player? Obviously, you don't need to give a name. Uh, yes, actually, several. Like, um, if I look at... Um, So there are a lot of players I don't know well enough to know um, whether or not they have uh, issues like depression or, or anything else uh, that would be clinically diagnosed. Um, but my guess would be, based on the ones I do know well enough, that over half of people who have succeeded at very high stakes 
have something uh, clinically uh, that is that has been clinically diagnosed, um, and you know they they would uh, whether they take it or not, they would you know doctors would prescribe medication for it, and I think um, I mean that that might be true for a larger percent of the population than I realize, but I think um, the general population it might be true for a lot, but uh, I think that high stakes poker players have things like that more often. Um, I think high stakes, like the best poker players have, um, brains that are less typical. Uh, jungle man's a perfect example of that. Um, and I mean, I, I fit the category as well. How can it make sense to play so many hands with seemingly little edge when one of the biggest pots was a cooler set of jacks versus top two on the turn, the cooler flush on the river for the worst hand. I mean, there's definitely a lot of variance. You know, we're playing 7,500 hands and um, the winner is going to be determined, you know, 70% by luck and 30% by skill um, or something like that. Maybe closer to 50-50. Um, but I don't know. I, you know, if you look around, any, any pro versus pro action that you see at high stakes, both players think they have the edge. I don't know if Jungle thinks he has an edge. I think he probably thinks he has an edge on me right now at PLO. But, you know, when we booked this match, it was over three years ago. And it was before I had, like, before I made my comeback to high stakes PLO. And so a lot of people thought I was washed up. Um, so I'm sure he thought he had the edge then, if not now. But also probably didn't care that much. 100, 200 is not massive stakes uh, for Jungle Man. And uh, he likes to have fun. So. Good luck. He used to lose money to me on uh, Full Tilt and Poker Stars. Nice to learn from you so I could be the PLO games I play now. Was still learning on Full Tilt. I think I do remember that screen name. Good luck, Amit. I'm glad, uh, glad I'm helping you learn now. I guess I'm also glad that I won money from you, but uh, I hope it didn't impact you too badly. Phil M says, Phil, why PLO over NL? I'm asking where Jungle Man is. Um, PLO, I... So in 2009 or so, in 2009 or so, I... I guess he's having technical problems. It was the first day we started on time, um, but we, we have a long break. Um, uh, was, oh, so 2000, I don't know if it was 2007, 2008, 2009, somewhere in there, maybe even 2000, you know what? I think it was earlier. I think it was probably 2000, uh, it was probably 2007. I, the games on full tilt at the highest stakes, uh, there was a lot of action on at PLO. So I, okay. I know in 2000, no, in 2007, which was my second WSOP. That's how I kind of remember the years. I remember that I wasn't playing PLO yet. So I guess 2008, 2009, I started. Um, wait, is that true? No, that's not true. I was playing PLO, but I was just like playing in the six max games. Uh, the reason I'm thinking back is because I remember being in a house um, with several guys, including Tom Dwan, and he was playing like heads up versus Zygmunt, heads up versus Benjamin at, at PLO. And I was like, those, that's those are tough matches to play. Um, like I, I I wasn't playing against them at least. So at first I thought that um, my first thought now was like, oh, I guess I wasn't playing, but I might have been playing just like six max games. But anyways, at some point, um, the games moved from no limit to PLO. There were actually a lot of half half games and then a lot of PLO action. There were still no limit games running, but I was like, I just need to learn. I need to be able to play in these half half games, which were really soft. And the PLO games look soft. Tom told me they were good. So I started learning. And I started learning at Cat PLO. And um, hey, Charlie Carroll. It's saying good luck. I don't know why I just saw you for the first time. Good to see you here, man. Can you get your link ready? What are you talking about?
I guess you guys, <laughs> you guys are seeing like the kind of as frustrated as I get, which is not that frustrated, but I have a very busy uh, week this week. And so uh, I've, I've uh, a couple times now, you know, killed uh, a half hour or an hour waiting for this match to, uh, to happen. I have a lot of things to get to. Um, anyways, uh, back to the, the PLO. So basically what happened then is I started playing both. Uh, then the games kind of dried up in no limit. I started playing just PLO and it was just PLO for several years. And then when games kind of came back to no limit, I hadn't played in like four or five years. And I was like, well, I guess I'm not good enough to play these games anymore. So I just didn't try. And I just stayed away, um, basically because I was no longer in like practicing no limit. Um, and, and probably by that point, uh, you know, PO solver, PO solver had come out and people were advancing quite a bit. Um, So I was just like, yeah, I guess I'm not good enough for high stakes no limit anymore. I'm good enough for high stakes PLO and there's plenty of PLO running, so I'll just play that. And so that's kind of how it happened. It wasn't a conscious choice to choose PLO over no limit. And now it's been basically 15 years plus, probably 15 years or so since I've played no limit seriously. Now, like I've played, you know, no limit tournaments during WSOP here and there. And I uh, played on a no limit TV game here and there, but you know, I don't play. Uh, no limit hold'em, and I would like to. I'd really like to learn. No, I, I actually don't even. I guess I don't know, but I would definitely wouldn't say I like PLO more than No Limit Hold'em. I'm just. I might. I might not. I might even like No Limit Hold'em better. I just don't know because I don't play it. Um, and I would like a reason kind of to play it again, but it, it hasn't made. Um, it hasn't yet made sense. Um, financially, because. I'm so far behind. So one thing I did last year, two years ago, when I was doing these PLO challenges, um, after I played a bunch of them, I, I tweeted asking if anybody would play No Limit, who was like, you know, not a top 10 No Limit player, um, because I wanted a fair fight. I wanted like the, I wanted to be able, I mean, I wanted to be able to work hard and have an edge, um, and make it worth my, and even if I, you know, broke even or lost in that challenge, um, then I'd, then I'd be good at heads up No Limit. Um, which then maybe I would learn six max no limit. Maybe I would be better at tournaments than I am, uh, which I'm not that good, but, um, but did not work out. I, I mean, I had people reach out who were like Linus, um, and that's not what I meant by, uh, the type of heads up no limit match I wanted. Uh, we're not playing on a play money site. because I believe that's not legal um, in the state of Nevada uh, for us to like play and settle up. Uh, okay. Phil, I think you will win a bracelet this year. Bet. Um, if I made a bracelet bet, maybe I would, but I, I'm not even sure if I want to play World Series events. I am... Um, I changed my mind every summer though, so we'll see. Um, but I just had the, I played the PLO series at Poker Go, which is like the Poker Go Studios is probably the best place. Well, the best place I've been to. I mean, they're probably, I, I've heard Triton is really, really nice, but the um, best place I've played a tournament, it's just very easy, comfortable, and uh, a great experience. And I played a week of PLO tournaments, which is my bread and butter. And I was just worn out and not having fun, to be honest. I mean, I, I did, I lost, so that has something to do with it. Um, but even still, it, it, it definitely, I mean, I'm never that pumped about playing WSOP tournaments, but it, it soured me on the idea a little bit more. We'll, we'll see. Um, so today we're down 6k, um, Again, uh, as it says right here, it's a cross book. We're playing 1020, but it's actually 100, 200 real stakes. And overall, we're down uh, on the bottom right. So before today, it was uh, 94K so or 95K. So we're down about 100. I have to take off Farah's happy birthday. Sorry, Farah. Um, so we're down. I guess I'll update that now to down 5K. But um, so yeah, we're down about 100K.
Uh, let's scroll down. There maybe been some new comments since. The stack sizes are actually 10x. Yes, everything is 10x. Uh, do I think if players are cross-booking in a non-heads-up game that they should declare it? Can't do much to enforce it. I'm trying to think how... Um, I think that if one player is booking another player, meaning I'm playing normal stakes for me, but um, Bob, who's playing at the table, uh, you know, I have 10x his, like I win 10x his losses or something, then I think you should declare it because your incentives are a little off. But if you both are just playing higher stakes, Actually, I guess incentives do get a little bit off because it's it's worth more to win a pot against them. So I think you should declare it, yeah. Basically, it all comes down to, you know, if it impacts your strategy or if it should impact your strategy or not. Uh, within reason. Like, I think, I think when players play a tournament and have a 2% swap, I don't think they need to declare that. It's not impactful uh, enough. But I think it has to do with, you know, how how impactful it is to strategy. Uh, so he checks here, I think, small bet, bet river, probably here, let's just call. No, seven on the river. Let's small bet again. So I'm blocking two pair. And I guess I'll pot here. Uh, I'm going to move this over here, move this, and I'm going to see if jungle put something on Instagram so that I can respond to it or do whatever it's called, share it in my story. Okay, one bluff worked, one bluff didn't. He's raising, he's saying it's a flush. I don't really have a strong opinion as to whether he does or not, but fold my hand. I mean, I don't see his. I don't see his story going out. So, oh, nothing for me to share. I could go either way on this flop. Better chat. I mean, basically, any paired board. Uh, when you're betting small, every hand is not every hand. A lot of hands are like a mix. It's just not a big deal, which you opt to do. I guess we'll check now. And over here. I kind of like betting, actually. So he's repping the... I don't know what I want to do here. Yeah, I mean, he has what he's repping. I don't know about my call there. I think I've taken a little too long to do anything but pot. Okay, snap calls, probably with a straight or a three. He had a three, a good three. King, queen, nine, three. You can see here, will it show? Um, if I were doing like a four table view, I'm actually going to raise this because there's a lot of equity, and but it also wants to deny some equity. It's just hard to show you the hand histories. Uh, if I were, you know, playing six max tables, it'd be different. But since I'm involved in every pot, there's no real time. appreciate you all continuing to chat. See, that's, uh, like I was talking about at the top. I don't, I don't always see the chat, but sometimes there are breaks and then I do. Uh, so he's half potting. I mean, I think I call even though, I don't know. It's pretty hard to be good, but I have a lot of equity and he could be bluffing. 
I think check raise, check call looks a little scary. Not like scary, like I'm going to check raise river, but like I have a seven. So I think he's going to give up on bluffs here. He had a four with a spade. Um, I'm going to delay Seabed this one and probably bluff most rivers. Interesting here. I guess I check. Um, it's if I didn't block the ten, I would like a small bet here. But I don't know. I don't know. No clubs. He does bluff turn a lot. And check call on the right. Um, I have a four. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, he just has all of it. All right. Yeah, I wasn't feeling great about it. I don't know if I need to make that call, but whatever. Easy call here. No raising 9-8. Pretty standard from him, except um, usually I would expect him to bet that flop. And I basically have to bluff this river. I was trying to decide if I want a half pot repping like 3-4 or um, pot repping the 8 because I do bet a lot of like 5-8, 6-8, 10-8 by now, but not a lot of 7-8. I'm kind of repping like 7-8 or 6-8, 10-10, 6-8 or something. That's kind of an iffy call of the 3-bet. Which means I'll probably flop a set. <laughs> I've I've been I've been on point lately. Although I guess I've just been calling for a set a lot, like four times in the last couple of days, and I hit it like twice or three times. Uh, easy, just call over here. Uh, I'm gonna go with check call. Three straights got there. It's too thin to. I mean, it's not too thin to small bet, but he's just gonna have like when he checks his flop, he's just got a lot of dead hands. And I think. Same is probably true on the river. Uh, he checks the queen. Checks the queen. Easy call here. I'm not going to raise too good. Um... So the problem is, 
I feel like he's the type to keep betting a lot of like King King. So I'm a basically I'm a little nervous about the trap uh, being set here. And I also feel like he's going to be folding the river. Here could raise, but I'm just going to call. Mm, should maybe check the, I don't know. I don't know. That plays fine, obviously, but make a little bit of a thin raise here out of the big blind. I mean, it's fine, but yeah, we're facing a big bet on the left. Definitely not folding. I don't think we're raising either. What does raising accomplish? Not much. I mean, protection. So we small bet flop. Small bet flop. He has multiple sizings. So like ace ace would be a good line to take. Uh, like this would be a good way to play ace ace. So the question is, is he trapping or uh, what else could he have? Ace king jack. King. Yeah, I'm gonna go for it. Okay. I mean, you just had a bluff, obviously, or maybe not, obviously. Maybe he was just like, ace-10 jack, I'm going to bet turn and then check fold river. But I think he had a bluff. Most likely. Um, Let's check call. I mean, it's standard check call. It's like, betting is kind of comfortable, but I think probably a mistake. Let me check call again. think. All right. So left table, ace, ace, always keep betting. Um, this is a reasonable hand to keep betting. Someone sits with us, but I like checking back. Queen makes it a little, I mean, not dicey, but he could have queen, queen, sir. We don't have the nuts anymore, basically. That's, I don't know what he's doing exactly. This is a very reasonable hand to continue betting with, but I think slightly too much showdown value. Queen, queen, nine, seven. But blocking the nine is good for betting. Having a spade is good for betting. Queens, though, are pretty bad for betting. I think we just fold. Queens are really bad. I mean, I'm suspicious, but this is like a really bad hand. Uh, over here, it worked. He had... Uh, Jack. So, I mean, if I had pot potted, I don't know, similar amount of money, maybe. I 
Hey, look, we're winning on the session. Uh, about 15K. I'll change the green. There we go. Easy raise here. Um, this is normally a three bet. He does limp, so it strengthens his um, his raising range a little bit. But I, I think it's just a little too good. Get dialed in. Actually, just get very comfortable. Uh, nine deuce, five, five. Jungle's doing a lot of sitting out. Um, I'm going to try to give him the... Because I feel like he's uh, losing the small blind. I don't know. He might have played more. Uh, whatever. Buttons or something. Uh, or I might have played more buttons, is what I mean. Uh, I guess I can't fold this, but I'm not doing great. Uh, it's a good river. It's a really good river because he should not have a full house when he plays this way. Does he ever have... No. Because, like... Nine, eight... It's really hard to have 9-8. He, he could have 8-8 eight, eight somehow. But to have 9-8... Um, he's like... I mean, 10... No, he, he kind of can't. He has like ace, 9-8, deuce with nut clubs, maybe. But even ace, 10, 9-8 with nut clubs, 3-betting pre, like, it's just impossible for him to have me beat, almost. Had eight eight, so I was right about that being possible. As we're now at twenty, and he's sitting out. Let's see if he is posted on Instagram. If that's what's going on, uh, he's probably having technical difficulties. Um, I assume. Uh, let's check out the chat. There it is. Talking old school poker fans loving this. I'm glad. Why would you raise the Ace King Six flop versus Queen Jack Four? Um. Uh, cause I had a flush draw as well. It, not because of the flop necessarily. <laughs> Charlie, me, why the hell did jungle bet so big? Phil, pretty standard for him. Me, yes, obviously standard. <laughs> I appreciate your humility, Charlie. Um, all right. Uh, a lot of talk. With Charlie, I'm always watching these streams. Insanely good content. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And uh, I, so I finally watched, um, I watched, I woke up early this morning. I watched a lot of the jungle stream. Um, his, I mean, his is amazing. And actually he, he, he did better than I did uh, keeping up with chat, which I, I think like distracted him quite a bit, but jungles, he's unique in that like he can play tilted like he can play angry or distracted and still just play well he has a very like solid extremely solid foundation um or like the way that he thinks through hands like the circuitry that that uh goes through like the hand the hand reading process and the decision process goes through is uh like there there's no there are no emotional emotions or anything in the way it's just like all outside of that circuitry somehow. 
it seems. We are back. I'll see if he... He was pretty passionate about me getting the Instagram thing up, so if he... Yeah, there it is. That is what we were doing. And I will share it. Uh, he's 10, 10 with three diamonds. I think is not a three bet with two diamonds. I think it is. It might be with three. Oof, okay. One moment. Well, I, I guess I have an interesting quality of hand here. Could go either way. Small bet or, oh, I don't have a small bet. This is what I get for doing two things at once. Copy link. And check decide with tens. I have tens on the wrong table. Check, check, ten flop, and he checks. Oh, we chop it up. Um, I feel like he might be folding. But then he's also going to bluff on the cards I hit. And I don't need to fold turn, so I get to call a turn bet. And then... Either call if I make my hand or bluff if I don't. And I think that works out pretty well. Three is kind of bad because I think he might have a three and I think he might uh, expect me to like bluff more or value bet less stuff on a three. Uh, easy call here. Jungle probably bluffing somehow, but I'm not going to call ace-king high. Although it'd be really good for the stream if I called ace-king high and won. Let's think for a second. Because he's not bluffing with like fives, right? Um... It's just too hard. Um, I think this is a check in theory, and I think it's a pretty good check against jungle. Let's see, he had me pipped. Please don't tell me he was bluff. I mean, I get so upset when I am thinking very seriously about making a a very non-standard call, and uh, then I don't make it, and I would have been right. So. Hopefully. Hopefully he just had kings. Uh, I think just call here, although raising is kind of tempting to force out a flush draw. Nah. Just call. Um, he's betting big. Not going to fold queens yet. It might be a fold in theory, but I don't know. I'm just like a little suspicious. Here he had at the bluff. He made a straight on the river, so he did not bet. I'm actually, this is not a trap in theory, but I want to trap him. I mean, I'm not calling queens with no spade, with no spade, no eight, no seven, no spade, no king. That's too bad. The trap did not work. Standard stuff here. You don't really need to check back 5x much. 
like just your weakest kind of I'm simplifying it's a bet in theory for sure I feel like it underperforms against the jungle but it's a very clear bet in theory so let's do it underperformed This one's a three bet, folks. Even against somebody who open limps sometimes. Which, by the way, I don't know, he has done. I always forget that he's like, I forget the open limp pots because they're usually kind of insignificant. But they're out there. Check turn bet river. You know, not value bidding worse than that, but it's a good calling hand. Kind of. Uh, fold, I guess. Bet sometimes, check sometimes. Interesting turn. I'm going to go for a thin value bet because like I'm pushing equity against this calling range barely. I do need protection. And when I check back river play, like I can't really value bet any rivers comfortably, the exception of the 10. Junkie double suited hand, but it is double suited. This jungle starts making the comeback. That's actually not exactly accurate. Let's call it 15. It's a little closer. Hmm. No diamond. Have a deuce. He would play a lot of hands that make like he has a lot of hands that make sense for value but you know not clear either way um i don't know here i mean this is obviously fine but you can do a lot of things I don't really like checking. A small bet is reasonable. Now we have clear check. No hearts in our hand. We have an eight. These are both useful-ish. The eight is, it's kind of debatable how useful the eight is because he's going to bluff hands like nine, eight and eight, four. I think he thinks when he super tanks, I don't believe him, but that's not necessarily true. Um, no hearts, have an eight. Does he ever have an under full? Sometimes not feeling great about this, but I'm 
but I'm going to call queen nine. Over here, um, it's not the worst calling hand. It's not the best either. 10x. I don't have enough 10x to just call that, though. I think I call and hope for the best. thinking about my jack 10 call i think i mean it's it's got to be fine all right i need to stop obsessive uh obsessively updating it's kind of hard when i when i lose a pot like a big pot or i win a big pot it's just obvious to me to go adjust the uh results so I'll just put it away for a minute. So, like, this hand is a pretty good small bet. It's a little bit thin to pot. I think ace-10 can pot. Like, it gets really close. I'm going to go for a check call instead. I think it plays a little better than a small bet. Yeah, ace-queen. I mean, sort of. I mean, small bet, eh, he might raise that, I think. I mean, I think he would, actually. It's so easy to have a hand I can call here. Let's try him anyways. It's also hard for me to have like a bluff, and a lot of my bluffs would have a straight blocker that want to go big. I mean, he just flicks in the call with that, so he didn't. I mean, it's a very reasonable calling hand, but I he didn't believe to put it that way. Um, I think pot here is probably the play. Half pot range on the right. He three bets. I mean, it's supposed to be a fold. I guess I'll fold. Don't slow play much Jack Jack at all on this board <clears throat> because uh, you unblock the ace. Which is kind of a multi street call down type hand. He's potting. Um, I think it's just a fold. Plenty of stuff to call with. clear call here or very clear call hmm. I mean I'm not doing anything other than checking just has the nuts uh here 
gonna go small bet. I mean, this is not uh, three about three clubs probably, but here we are. Um, small bet, small bet. Let's see how it goes. has me beat easy calls from him we didn't lose that much i think turns more standard of a check but i kind of like the small bet small bet when i unblock all of the pairs well i have a six but all the pairs all the straights it's a lot of stuff he can have that he's later gonna um well he's not gonna bet and then i beat that he can call down with Pots on the ace. Uh, I mean, obviously calling. the best blockers clubs are bad i mean it's a fold i'm a little suspicious to be honest but it's a fold um could small bet but blocking two jacks it's kind of hard to get called and it means he'll have more bluffing candidates he pots it's not good uh, again, like just my blockers are too good. I don't think I can fold this. Although I do think he has it this time. Nope. That's why you don't always trust your reads. By which I mean you you shouldn't just trust your reads when you have a very clear calling hand. Unless you have a very strong read. Um, he checks. If I had a higher spade, I might start fighting for this pot. Mm -hmm. I think I just check too many hands that he can put in money with. Start bluffing here. really I'm tempted to raise this but not going to queen and the 10 aren't good I want him to have queens and 10s when I raise uh right table it's pretty thin after a half potting turn it's probably too thin um he goes for the raise nine six seven six eight six I'll make a ton of sense uh he knows that though Nine eight eight seven. Nine eight eight seven. Don't think he's raising nut flushes. Nine seven bets flop a decent amount. As does nine eight maybe seven eight maybe. Although six eight probably does. Six seven nine six don't they play it this way? I don't know. I don't know. Blockers are pretty bad. So we'll let that one go. Eight. 
going to check back on the left. And here, I think with a 10, I start bluffing or something, but nine high is not the, not the hand. We'll pot turn, of course. Again, my, my cards are pretty bad here. In position, you always bluff like bottom of range, but out of position, you want to bluff more blocker centric. I wonder what he has. I'm going to fold my nine high, but I'm just curious. I'm just curious what he takes that line with. Okay. Um, right table is supposed to be a fold, I believe. I have reason to be suspicious. Not enough. Not enough, I think. Doesn't have a lot of king 10 here. Clubs, sure, but I block a club. It's a pretty decent calling hand. King 10 jack, king 10 7. It's a decent calling hand. Okay. Low clubs make sense, but that's why the 8 is a pretty useful blocker. A lot of high clubs bet earlier. I think this is probably a bet. This is definitely a raise. Clear check back with kings. I mean, just a lot of standard plays here. So, I mean, kings are kind of useful. Um, this hand could be a four bet sometimes. Ten, ace jack, jack, ten. Just call it a four and random stuff. The eight's kind of bad. Queen nine, he plays this way, like always. Eight, nine. I think it's a call. Okay, and here, this is just a call. Uh, it's supposed to be a three bet, I'm pretty sure. It's a pretty good flop. Pretty good turn on the other table, too. I think with no spades, what do I do? I don't know. Um, here, I think I like check raise. Is he best straight? Probably not.
right table, I mean, go either way. On the turn, check, call, check, raise river. Yeah, let's do that. That's a bad river for the check, call, check, raise river plan. Maybe I should lead. Um, seven, what did he have? Jacks. So he had a seven. My plan was going to, well, check raising turn might have worked well too. I don't know. Um, I probably win over here, but it's really hard to get called when I block the jack. Uh, easy call. It's a good turn. Is my hand good enough to go for stacks? We're a little bit deep. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. So I have a little bit of, um, Spidey senses tingling that he has like me beat, but I have to um, ask myself always, is that fear uh, or an actual read? And I think it's more likely fear. So I'm just going to go for the value. Um, he's not supposed to check a lot of nine X. I think King nine and King King probably check a lot. King King probably checks a lot. Checks on the turn over here. Kind of interesting. Okay. So actually, I mean, he he folded. I didn't get value, but I think that's a perfect example of um, nice hand um, concept that I talk about a lot, which is you know being aware, not, not trying to suppress your emotions, but being aware of them and thinking through a hand with them included in the thought process. And so I often trust my reads a lot, but when my read in a spot like that is, oh man, I think he's trapping. It, feel, it feels like he might be trapping in a spot where, you know, a very small percentage of his hands are hands good enough to trap. Um, and my hand is a very standard bet. It's even better when I have two diamonds. Um, I just, uh, I guess this is a call, actually. I don't know why he's half potting. I'm going to find out. Um, but my point is, it's... Um, What is my point? It's a perfect example of um, you know making the right play. Like, yeah. So diamonds are good for betting because it it makes him more likely to unblock diamonds, making him more likely to call. That's where I lost my train of thought and tried to play the hands in question as well. So when when a play is just very clearly Right. That seems close. The play is very clearly right. Should just try to push yourself, in that case, push myself past, you know. I'm going to go small here. It's a weird... um Blocking the king, it's just harder to get called. And so 
I kind of want him to raise a small flush or um, call with some, you know, get really curious with a 10. So I think a small bet works well. Um, he's obviously always going to raise better flushes, and I'm going to call and lose more, but, I mean, that's fine. Um, one of the two better flushes is raising against pot as well. Good three-bet hand, right table, easy call. Bet range on the left. No here. I think because of my recent activity, he's going to get very suspicious. Um, okay, what am I going to do here? In a pot. Let's try to get that turn fold equity, even though my blockers are not good. And then um, this is not the kind of hand you want to follow through with on the river. Uh, this is just a fold here on the right. I mean, I'm basically the bottom of my range. Uh, obviously, I could consider raising. I don't think he'll believe me this time. Although jungle is good at finding the spots where, you know, most people don't bluff because it doesn't look believable um, and making some good hero folds. Uh, we are up a little bit now. So let's see, we start, we're up 25. Um, I guess this is a fold against that sizing. Very big sizing for that dry board, but it's not. I mean, you can kind of do whatever you want on all these in all these spots. Check, um, standard check call. It's not the worst check raise. It's not the worst check raise. I think he might not believe this that much just because of how draw heavy the board is. But the nice thing is I get to bluff on a lot of like, well, this is the other nice thing is that he's not going to, I want to play this one. I mean, this is supposed to be a check raise, I think in theory. In practice, though, I think it's going to work better as a pot. I can get him to fold some dry queens and kings and uh, call with dominated hands. Uh, that's, I mean, I'm calling and I'm drawing. Eight deuce. Yeah, that's reasonable. I mean, I got lucky. Right table, that hand makes sense. Um, you know, don't want to get results oriented. I, I I don't think he's gonna believe my check raise too much there, but he's also just he's also just gonna have a lot of hands that doesn't really matter what he believes because he can't do anything about it. Um, mm, up thirty five now. He checks to me on king 5-5. Five, five. That's a weird one. It's certainly a weird one. Ace-9-7-3. This is, might be a fold, but it's kind of close. I guess I check again. Here, I'm going to start betting. I mean, I think I can't raise king-queen. 
I'm like really high in my range, almost the top of my range, but I still think it's just not a raise. Okay, and a king. Makes sense. Weird spot now. Uh, base double gut shot and flush draw. I think we just commit. Yeah, I think I think I'm right to just not. I mean, I could have bet turn, but I think I'm right to not raise river. I don't know though. I'm not always right. Not always making the right plays. Showdown nines. Um, could almost value about them, but not quite. I'm just going to check call the river here. I think he just is likely to not have anything. Obviously, could pot trip kings. He had threes. Um, could have called with that. You never know. Here with a uh, future blocker queen, the three being a nice out, and the the like ace being a good barrel card because I pick up additional equity and blah blah blah. I'm gonna go for the bet. He he's check raised like every time I've made one of these thin uh, thin flop bets. I don't know if I always need the three about this, but but I did. I go small bat like I do with my full range. Okay. Uh, Ace Ace Queen are really good blockers here because, I mean. Actually, the theory is pretty complicated, but he's not going to raise queen x. <laughs> this is a funny hand. Um, I'm going to check river, obviously. The reason ace ace queen are good is because, well, the queen is kind of iffy, but he's supposed to raise, he'll raise some queen queen, but he'll raise some like ace nine. He's supposed to raise more ace nine and king nine than he is, you know, weak nines. But that said, I, I think he's not unlikely to raise a weak nine, uh, just to like be tricky, raise flop, and then you check turn and now you're tricky. He had nothing. So you saw I was considering leading turn. And I think because of ace-ace in my hand, I should be less likely to because he's more likely to have a bluff. Um, interesting one here. I'm actually going to go for the small bet on the left, which is too thin in theory. But I think things just play out well when I do this. He check calls with jacks. He check calls with a 10. Check raises with a bluff. And now I just show down. Uh, don't lose too much against a flush. All right, so here we're obviously potting. Queens, I don't know. He expects us, to, I mean, he's checking range on this right table, so he's expecting us to pot a lot, but. My hand's too good. Uh, so I had to pot. And then now. I 
I don't know. I think it's going to work. Non-standard with no spade in my hand, but I don't know. I think it's very believable. I mean, if he has a flush, he has a flush, but I think he's not going to call without a flush, basically. Um, I mean, that's a generalization. I think he's usually going to fold a non-flush. Like, I think he'll fold a non-flush 80 90% plus. Uh, so the question is, how often does he have a flush? 20%. I don't know. But that means he'll fold enough. Good bet. If I bet here, it's a two barrel. Left table, I like potting. Uh, a lot of stuff I can make fold now. And like I have decent equity against two pair, but I can't really check call very comfortably. Yeah, I'm going to have to go for it here. He will have a lot of flushes. So in, in this spot, if he calls with uh, non-flushes like that, it's probably a bad bluff. Um, although that was pr particularly good hand. Um, hmm. If he's calling a lot of non-flushes there, it's bad because he probably has a flush 30% of the time, and if he's never folding those, and then never folding, um, or sometimes calling non-flushes, that would be bad for obvious reasons. Uh, here, I guess I have to bluff my jacks. So check range over here. Uh, clear call, of course, and we'll call river. I don't think it looks like we make a lot of boats, but I guess five, six, four, six, three bat, good small bat, good big bat. Let's go with small. Um, it's a weird spot. Maybe small is my only sizing. I, I don't really know. A little unhappy. Uh, I don't think he's folding, but here we go. I mean, like, my hand's a really good bluff because, I mean, the seven is nice. I unblock two, three, four. I unblock queen, ten. I have a single jack. I unblock the king, which is... Well, that can go both ways. At least we made him think. Yeah, we made him fold even better.
Okay. And our first real win of this entire uh, match thus far. About 50. Right? Yeah. I think I need to start using bigger sizing. So like my um my strategy in theory is on on ace xx. I split third pot and pot. But the problem is I'm missing I'm I'm rusty on theory. By the way, I think that's a good like solver approved approach. However, I'm rusty on theory. And so, weird one. Uh, so, King ten six, yeah, that's standard call. Uh, because I am rusty on theory, I'm missing a lot of the the pot bets basically. So I'm ending up basically, uh, I'm, I'm not putting in enough money overall. And so I'd probably be better served to just go with like half pot or two thirds with my full range. Um, here, I'm going to go for the pot raise. Only have one club, so like he's bet folding some club club hands. I river the three, but I'm not repping boats very well. No, I don't know. Okay. It wasn't going to work as it turns out. Jungle was laying a trap. You can catch a falcon with a trap, with a good trap. It's got to be well set, though. Uh, okay, we'll go small over here. I think small here. These hands sometimes go small again, which is, I think, which is weird. I don't like going big with aces. Okay. So the ace of diamonds is not doing much for me here because he's already said, quote unquote, that he doesn't have enough flush. So I'd rather have a queen of diamonds. I'd rather have a jack of diamonds. Maybe even jack or ten of diamonds would be best. Question is, can I call with something? Uh, this is kind of weird. I'm going to flick in the call. I don't know. Queen seven, okay. Um, it would be a pretty wild call. He's probably betting straights. Would he bet flushes that are smaller? I don't know. I, it's not a great hand. Just not a great hand. All right. Jungle strikes back. All right, let's flop both sets. That's my goal here. That would be a hard one to call. Ah, uh, just one set. Damn. Uh, 
He was thinking about doing something. Uh, I really wanted him to do something. That's unfortunate. <laughs> I'm pretty sure what that's what that was. He was thinking about check raising with some nonsense. Uh, or maybe he was dealing with a technical issue. That's actually more likely now that he's sitting out. Get to some of your questions in a minute if this is indeed a break. Unfortunately, Queen 10 just needs to fold here. Interesting. Okay. I guess we're taking this to showdown. I don't think it's good enough to value bet. Jungleman leaves the other table. Returns. Perhaps we're not taking a break. If that was technical difficulty or whatever. Regardless, on we go. Um, he had... Ace high, the same gut shot. Pretty good flops for me. Let's check this one and bet this one. Good turn for me. I mean, I'm making hands, what can I say? Um, I'm actually gonna check this one back with two jacks in my hand. It's just like, you know. Uh, and here, I'm not gonna attack, I think. Uh, ace king. What is he? I think I'm going to raise. And here, I think I'll check back and raise river. Ten ten's a concern, but I mean a very small one. A very, very small one. Six, five, six. This seems close. I already have a six, I guess. Yeah. Ace King six eight. Well, had I threw that flop, it would have gone better, but can't know his exact holding. Uh, now that we're a little deeper, small bet is, I mean, this hand's a small bet regardless. He called on this table with king queen, which is, I think, very standard. Uh, king queen nine nine, I'm not sure about here. I guess I should have three bet. Uh, and here, clear check call, I think. It's tempting to raise on king queen queen just because like it kind of doesn't make sense because it's really hard to have a raising hand here i'm in a small bet it's a little bit thin or it's a lot of bit thin actually but i think it's not super believable Yeah. 
no club in my hand. I think it's just a fold. Gave up. That's too bad. Um, okay, do I have any reason to doubt him having a flush? Not particularly, no. Not enough of a reason to call with no club. Oh, interesting. So Jungle had a very good, uh, I could have bet that flop, very good bluffing hand to barrel off. He decided not to. I'm not sure if that, well, I'm not sure if that means anything. I'll just put it that way. Standard here. Standard from him as well. Pots I fold here. I think a pretty good three bet. That's close. Um, I actually don't know if I should have a bet that big this deep. I think this is too low equity. I think it's just check fold. I think I bluff now. But I went with a 10, yeah. But how much air do I have on this board? I think it's just kind of hard to have. Well, it's definitely hard to have air. I don't know why I thought he was going to call Oof, with ace jack. I mean, he had. It's a very good calling hand. He has no diamonds. He has ace jack nine. Um, it's actually a standard call, I would say, but that's too bad. I thought he would really believe me that time. And the heater is uh, on hold. So he's at 35. Actually, it's closer to 40. So this is one of the best hands to barrel off. So I will bet turn and pot most rivers. He does, I feel like, maybe get emboldened by picking off a big bluff, and then he picks off another one. It's not a great river. It's not a great river. I kind of want to check now. I kind of want to check now. Ace King. Uh, I want to check. Yeah, he's calling.
really tough spot if we face a bet on the right where um, he's probably going to value bet every single better hand and maybe the same exact hand and no worse than King Jack for value. Um, like he's always going to keep betting a set or should. But the King and the Jack are really good blockers. No clubs, no five, no three. Clubs, I don't know. He gives up a club sometimes, but. I feel like making a hero fold here. I feel like making a hero fold. Um, Random ace ten four. He's betting a lot. Mm. It's a lot of sets, a lot of stuff that beats me. But I think he thinks that when he super tanks, I think he's bluffing. So that's that's what he did last time with a clear value bet. Is he doing it again, or did he hear me say that and he's adjusting? I don't know. So many value hands. He has so many value hands. No, it's just too good of a calling hand, I call. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those, do I trust my gut or not? I don't know. He keeps betting over here, which is interesting. Lead is lead is crumbling before our eyes. Um, hand's gotten really interesting here. <laughs> 10 deuce with a flush. Check back over here, it's gonna look like I have what I have basically. Um, and he is potting. Is 8x better to raise or is this better to raise? I'm going to call. Makes sense. We need to get three bet over here so we can flop a set again. Hmm. We didn't get three bet, so we flop blockers instead. Uh, I guess let's bet. I need to refill my water. Okay, um, this is a point in the session where I feel I'm feeling how tired I am. I guess uh, if you weren't here at the beginning, I mentioned that I went out last night for my wife's birthday, and I drank for the first time in a long time. I don't want to play this. I think I want to check raise. 
it's a little thin because queen queen plays this way a lot. Eh. Maybe I take it back. Okay. Now I want to check raise. Um, I like the river check raise. They don't like expect it a lot, I think. And um And I mean, yes, he has 5 4 sum, but on a6 3 rainbow, he bets so much 5 4. So much 5 4. Make it a6 3 with a flush draw, the play becomes worse. But unblocking the ace, unblocking the queen, he can bet two pair and a lot of stuff. I think that works out well. Two, I'm only up 30 now. Too bad we were on quite a heater. Oh no, I'm closer to 40. Math. Mm. Yeah, let's put it back to 40. I guess that, that's good evidence of me being tired, is not being able to calculate how much I'm up. Four four three really good cards for betting, just because they block a lot of stuff that continues. I think I like potting. And then on the left table, that's weird. That's weird. I guess I show down and hope to win. I mean, I probably lose. I was trying to decide if this makes a good check raise hand. I don't think it does because I don't have a queen or an eight. And he's not really repping king queen. He's repping queen eight and eight seven. And queen eight is going to be the one that never folds. How thin does he want to go for value? Oh, no time bank. No time bank. Nice river. Clear pot. Um, start betting on the left. Nice and deep. Pot pot. Those are the spots where it's pretty easy to be balanced because you bet a lot of one, uh, you bet a lot of single flush blocker hands on the flop along with your flush draws. It's a little, a little light. Is queen, queen, nine, six, a three bet? I think so. We are deeper now. Um, I don't know if that makes it less or more of a three bet. This is a fold to half pot, I know that. To third pot, yeah. This is a very thin bet on the on the left, but I think it works out better than check calling. Just because he has a lot of like, you know, deuce six or ace deuce that might pot if I check. He might 
you know, raise some of those. Uh, weird. I don't, I don't know what to do here. It's maybe a little too thin. Uh, here, I could obviously three bet. It's a pretty good three bet hand. Just don't know if he's going to believe me right now. I don't know. I don't know. Here he had six ace king, eight six. Okay. So I'm glad I didn't fold to a third pot. Okay. The only reason we didn't flop a set here is because we couldn't flop a set. Otherwise, I definitely would have. These are the turns. Like, I've been potting a lot of these turns, and he's been, like, not folding the mans that I think he should. I raised the limp here, right? So then I just bet and have pot. Um, and my hand's a really good potting hand. I guess I do it. The nice thing is he might call, like, you know, ace, seven, five, king. Um, and the other nice thing is that I, you know, I have four nut outs. On the nine, I have a lot of other ways to make a very strong hand. Well, or a pretty strong hand. He finds the check raise again. Um, 800. The thing is, if he's bluffing, my hand is good. And if not, I do have outs. And I mean, I block his value range pretty hard. He was bluffing last time, and he showed me. So, I mean, he'll have that in his mind. Ah, it's a bad river. That's a bad river. So I'll have some ace five. Maybe a lot of ace five, even. I'm not going to bluff if check two. Uh, nine, six, ten, nine, both missed. If he jams, I mean, I think I have to fold this. Like, he could even have ace, like, he could even have king eight, five, five, or something. Uh, the only way I'm going to be tilted <laughs> is if he has some kind of weird, like, queen, queen, five, three. Um, but I mean, it's just a check. Cool. He went for it again. That is that is the jungle effect. Most mere mortals, when they check raise on a straight board against pot in a in a three bet pot in the same spot, uh, and then they show the bluff, they don't bluff the next time. But jungle man is no. Mere mortal. Uh, I don't think I can raise ace jack. We are up. A little more. Uh, weird spot here. I definitely want to bet something. Kind of like potting rather than a half pot kind of polarizes he'll call with i mean not more one pair than he would against half pot but maybe almost as much and then i get more value uh, obviously easy river check with my two pair worked out i mean his play is 
incredibly standard. Uh, here on the other table, I'm going to half pot, which is my most common delay C bet size when the when the board's an undercard, but I but I do when the turn brings an undercard, but I do use both. Half pot and pot still, as does jungle it seems. Now we just show down once again. He got us. Ace 10, 8, 7 with 2 to a suit, easy 3 bet with 3 to a suit, I don't know. I think betting this is good. I don't know if I like pot or third pot. Third pot might work a little better. I'm going to pot river for sure. No clubs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Here, do I want to call this? Well, King Queen Nine Jack. Strange check, but I mean he got me. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I think blockers are a little too good. Nice in value bet from the jungle there. This is very thin with four spades, but I like the, I don't know, deception of hitting the low boards. I'm kind of suspicious here, but I mean, what can I do with that hand? The backdoor flush draw I call here, I think it's a fold without, even with ace high. I could be wrong. Could always be wrong. Crazy, he's going pot on ace queen 10 3 double with his limping range. But what am I going to do about it? He is allowed to limp king jack. It is allowed. Like up 50 now. Uh, I don't think we value bet king queen here. That's close though. Big hand on the right. Um, probably. I just pot. I don't think anything else works out very. I mean, anything works, of course. Check raise is a little awkward because there are a lot of bad rivers. Small bet, three bet, kind of the same thing. And the problem when I block all those cards, like I'm not going to get them to thin value raise very often. Interesting. Is he betting here? Uh, I mean, I'm going to call for sure. And here, I mean, he probably made a flush or a straight. Might raise. I think I need to try to bluff him off of 
a four or a flush or a straight. Check this one. It is never fun to try to bluff somebody off of a range that is trips plus. I don't know. I kind of want to jam. I think he's bluffing with a four. Um, Cause what the heck does this? But what am I repping? Ace, ace, eight, eight. Somehow. I mean, what does he have though? I took too long. I I mean, no, it does matter because if he's bluffing, he could he could bluff call with a four. I think he's bluffing. Um Okay. Pretty clear bet here. Um well, I shouldn't say that. Checking is very reasonable, but when I take uh, eight hours to check, it becomes less reasonable. Actually, I didn't realize we're so short. I, I like check better. I think this is a mistake. Because, like, jacks up or better can value jam as him, maybe even 10 8. So, yeah, I don't like my my lead. I was, uh, to be perfectly honest, thrown off by the last hand. And um, thrown off by the last hand. And uh, not that like I'm sad about the last hand. I just was thinking really hard about it. And I really wanted to throw up Bluff the River. Um, went with sixes. I think he's going to fold here, by the way. Um, okay, I'm wrong every time. Uh, but he would have jammed that if I checked. So, like, I, I don't know. I think it's a bad bet for me. Um, it would be a really bad bet on the undercard when I make the straight. On the overcard, because he has some two pair that are then checking, it, it's different, but... Leans will get to showdown probably. Wow, he just bets. I didn't expect to see a bet here. Did not expect to see a bet. Um, what do we make of that? Just seven, eight or something. Well, what's he hoping to get called by? What's he hoping to get called by? Jack eight. Um, she has like seven, eight, six, eight. I'm confused, to be honest. I'm really confused. I'm going to look him up with a really bad calling hand. Just has it. Um, I wasn't expecting. Uh, basically, I just thought he would trap, but I guess with both eights, hmm, that doesn't really matter, actually. 
didn't believe him and I was wrong. That's kind of the bottom line. Left table, we call three bet, call small bet. We have a lot of stuff going on, but it's all it's all non-nut. Would hate to get check raised with this holding. I think it's an easy check, and we'll take it from there. Interesting. Third nuts, block top two pair. I do think he's going to have strong flushes a lot. A lot, a lot. Why do I think of that? But not so much. I mean, I can't check a jack high flush. I, you would need the read of the century to check a jack high flush here. Um. It is a little hard to get called. Actually, I kind of like check. I kind of wish I checked. I mean, it's kind of, it's it's a crazy check, but not much missed and I don't know. It just felt like it's kind of hard to get called here. I blocked the queen and the jack. I guess I had the best hand. Well, obviously I had the best hand. <laughs> um, but it's hard to get called. Check call turn pot river. Interesting. No hearts in my hand. I guess I'm folding, but I am very suspicious. I'll just call with a heart in my hand, fold without, and I'll get to roughly the right call frequency. And I think, I don't know. I don't think he's way over bluffing or under bluffing. It'll be, I mean, decent frequency there. Queen Jack 3-6. I think it's supposed to be a fold, but we're a little deeper and, and you know, let's play some poker. Uh, it's just a fold. It's, it's a good raising hand if you have some raises, but don't really need raises on that flop. I am up yeah, 70. I'm already forgetting the pot where I must have um must have stacked him. Oh yeah. It was my I rivered a straight. Uh check call here and hope for the best. It's not the worst check raise hand. Pretty good check raise hand, but I don't know. I'm pr I probably have the best hand if uh, check. I could small bet. Um, I mean, I'm check calling ace queen. He does play a ton of jack ten this way, so it's unfortunate. But um. I'm blocking the queen, so it means more turn bluffs, and I'm blocking the ace, so it means more river bluffs possible. He just has jack 10, which is what's expected most of the time. Here he's potting. Why are you potting? I don't, I don't know. I'm going to call. Makes perfect sense. And just like that, 10K back. Uh, 
Uh, obviously calling. Uh, I, the right table, I don't have to bet the river. But I think it's a good bet. I have a, a, a decent number of bluffing candidates there. Left table, I'm going to make a weird bet that's kind of just like, I don't think you have that much, and I block you having turned a pair, I block you having turned a straight draw, I block you having turned a flush draw, so let's just get you to fold one pair or no pairs and uh, take it from there. It's a pretty good check raise hand because, although Jack X is maybe better. because I just don't have a lot of seven deuce three. He was gonna maybe bluff that. Didn't need to. Um, Cause I'm not gonna have a lot of under, like under two pair in my raising range uh, three. He had that here. Go ahead and bet. I'm gonna fold that to the three bet because I can't flop a set. This might not be a call pre, but I thought I was going to flop a boat or something. All that seems okay here. Certainly thin. I guess we'll check raise. Um... Right. Yeah, too thin. I mean, whatever. It's fine. Uh, I didn't have the best hand that time, is what I meant. This my check raise fails. He had a deuce for bottom pair. No draw. Um, which I guess could maybe call a small bet or something but we don't want to be results oriented. Check range on the left, on the right, I guess I'm checking this. And then we show down the flush, uh, left table, just check fold. Pots. Um, block kings and queens, which is pretty good for me. I'm going to call. I don't know. I'm going to call. Face pot here. I mean... I don't think you're supposed to be folding any kings, but he's repping better than King Jack. Not anymore. A higher diamond I raise here, but just fold that one. Could I lose? Could I? Yeah. I mean, he can have ace-king. He could have 
seven four. You could have four four. But uh, it's just about that's all there is to it. And he's seen me find some bluffs and some hard to bluff spots where it seems like, you know, seems like everything got there. So uh, he's trying it again. I guess I'll bet, bet. Pot, pot, I mean. Blocking the five is not amazing because, you know, I block some turn two pair and stuff. They can call me down, but I don't really like how any other line plays out. If he checks on the right, it's pretty interesting. A lot of trips. How often does he do this with something else, though? I'm actually going to bet this turn. Um, I'm supposed to call. Let's call. Uh, quads. Um, check. Probably check raise here. Um, essentially, I just thought a bet looked too credible. I'm going to check raise on the right, actually. King five. We have the same hand on the turn. So, lucky river. Not thrilled that he's potting. I think he has two sizings here, but here goes nothing. Um, yeah. All right, cool. I don't know how believable this is. I think it looks like ace queen 10 or something with clubs, maybe. <laughs> it's a weird river. Now I'm supposed to bluff. Very good blockers here, but kind of just believe he has a straight or you know, probably an ace jack or queen jack. I don't know why I believe him though. Really good blockers, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that one. Interesting. I'm pretty sure ace queen eight eight suited to the ace the three bet. And if anything, I thought he three bet a little too much. Here we have an easy check call. Mm, how do I want to play this? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I guess I check rubber. I could small bet. Small bet's decent too. Maybe I should just small bet. Call, of course. Okay, check worked out better. Top two over here, easy call. Um, we don't have many raises on this board. This hand's not strong enough to be one of them anyway. Bad turn. Get some calling sevens with a flush draw against half pot. You could fold this to three quarters. Well, I beat bluffs. I have some outs. Not a lot of outs. The eight's not great. Seven, eh, I think I have too many outs to fold. It's pretty unthrilling, to say the least. Um, I don't think this is supposed to be a fold yet. It's a very bad river. A lot of his bluffs got there. Um, I fold sevens. That that one's easy. Um, I just don't need a call without a ten here ever. So, just clear fold. If he's bluffing, good for him, but. I just called it. To, I mean, I have so much 10x. Easy fold. Can't beat a bluff, so. <clears throat> Jungle is jungling. Only 50, which is still, a, you know, not complaining. Almost 200 big blinds deep on both tables, which gets interesting. Uh, left table is a good check raise hand on the flop, but he checked. Right table, small bet range. Left table, let's check. Kind of unfortunate. Um, I mean, it's it's not unfortunate to turn a top full house, but it's hard. I just felt like he was weak on the flop a lot, so you know, better to check. This looks like a spot I'm going to go for a lot of check raises, which is unfortunate, but I also just think he's weak. So, um, And I block all the aces, including the ace of diamonds, which is pretty relevant because he's got to fold some, like, you know, 
ace, four, five, six, unless he has uh, diamonds. I guess he was not weak, so my read was wrong. I don't know if this is a three bet or not. Yeah, he had the eight, queen jack eight. Um, pretty standard from him. And, you know, I have a lot of options with my hand. It worked out nicely. Uh, this is kind of a funny spot. Guess I'm bluffing with the ace. Because Jack Jack is really good to have. It has blockers. Jack Jack six at that. I mean, how do I? You can't have Jack Jack six without having a straight here, basically. I'm going to make a thin value bet. Um, I guess we'll start with a check here. He had King Jack seven with the seven of diamonds. I guess we're folding on the left table. So jungle is about to take a short break, I thought. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, when he does, I'll have a quick, uh, what do I want to do here? I'll have a quick run to the bathroom and then, uh, but like one minute, and then I'll come back and chat with you guys, assuming his takes longer, but it may not. Uh, clear call, I think. River the second nuts, but I block the nuts pretty hard. Um, what do I want to do here? I think just pot. Don't limp your last hand. Let's let's get it over with. Um, you need to defend pretty wide on this board. Um. I think I'm up seventy five now. 
maybe even wait. I guess I'm folding river. Uh started it. No, 70. Oh yeah, 75, 80. Uh, I'm going to call it 80, because I don't know. How we probably paid some rake. Um, so, just hang tight one minute. I will get to your chat questions momentarily. All right, let's check out chat. I was It was weird. I ran to the bathroom and I ran out and I heard my voice and I was like, am I playing my stream? But um, Farah's watching. Shout out, Farah. Love you. All right, so let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Let's pull this into the window. I know you can't see much of it. <clears throat> trying to see i mean as you should be you're chatting amongst each other mostly ba, 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 ba. let's see if i can scroll up and see if there are some questions towards me phil don't talk about others to raise his profile oh i don't talk about others to raise my profile i don't know i guess i missed uh this is about Eric says, spread the word. He's too humble to beg for likes and subs. Uh, I appreciate it. I won't beg. I will occasionally ask. So uh, if you've been enjoying this stream and uh, the three prior, actually six, five prior to this, um, please consider liking and subscribing uh, and letting me know in, well, in this chat or afterwards if you're watching in the comments, uh, because I like to hear from you um, quite a bit. Appreciate it, Eric. Um, I like jungle too. Uh, the origin of falcons, I see. Which was uh, there's a um, there's a Bellagio. I think they they moved the game this year to elsewhere. But there was Bellagio mixed game like the the fifteen hundred three k or the two k four k. 10 game, 12 game mix that runs that that's kind of the most frequent high stakes open game in the world, I would say. Um, although it's died down a little bit recently. Uh, there's a big uh, thread for it where everybody chats and we organize games. And I shouldn't say we because I barely play in it, but I have sometimes. And somebody was talking to me, I think it was David Oppenheim, and he just tried to type Mr. Galfond, but it corrected him to Mr. Falcons, and uh, the rest is history. Is any hand preflop a fold heads up? Yeah, it they are. Um, I think you're supposed to fold like 20% from the button and almost 30% from the big blind. Um, I'm We're both playing looser than that on the button, I think. Uh, and he's limping actually on the button. So when you employ a limping strategy, you probably don't fold. You could fold never, or you could fold like 5% or something. 
Uh, but I use raise only on the button because I think it's easier. On ace x x, I split between third pot and pot. Is Phil talking about the as the three better? Yes. So as the three better, um, this is back now three years ago. When I looked at uh, three and a half years ago, when I oh I should sit it. Let him know I'm ready when he is. Um, I, from studying solvers, it seemed very likely, I have backup water here, by the way. Um, it seemed very likely that, actually, that reminds me of a really funny story about Jungle Man that I'm going to tell. Uh, to, to button up this thought, um, I saw that solvers split between third pot and pot. Uh, mostly, and so I tried to emulate that. We're back, but I, I have to tell this Jungle Man story now. So, uh, I'm living in Vancouver with uh, my wife Farah and our dog. No children yet, and I was having dinner uh, with Farah. I think just us, and a friend of mine was hanging out with Jungle Man, and they joined us as our dinner was finishing up. And we, we got the check, and, and as the waitress came out, uh, Jungle Man said, can I have a Diet Coke? And she said, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, the kitchen just closed. And, and he, he looked dejected. And we were kind of like, come on, it's just get him a Diet Coke. It's really easy. Um, and, uh, like he said, really, you can't just, and, and she said, yeah, my kitchen's closed. I can't help you. So I'm going to bet three about the river here, I think. I'm not playing very well because I'm telling the story. Anyways, he asked for a Diet Coke. She says, sorry, the kitchen's closed. Um, he looks really sad and to the point where I felt and my wife felt a little bit uncomfortable, like felt bad for him because come on, this guy just wants a Diet Coke and, uh, he's, he's clearly bummed that he can't get one. And, uh, but anyways, waitress leaves, uh, we kind of don't say anything for a while. There's an awkward silence. And after about one minute, probably. Jungle Man reaches down into, he has like a plastic 7-Eleven bag or something, um, and pulls out one of three bottles of Diet Coke that he had. Uh, so uh, he was sad that he couldn't have another one, but uh, but he had a Diet Coke. He was good to go. That's the end of the story, uh, as I three bet. The River with King King. Right table, kind of a weird spot. I'm going to half pot river. I think like ace nine, I would not bet here. Ace 10, ace jack, I like betting. But it you know, varies based on opponent quite a bit. Look out. Uh, here I turn the gut shot with the ace. It's a spot where his range is so weak that I kind of just like potting and denying equity and, you know, have a good hand. He had a 10, of course, on the other table. Not a full house, just jack 10 with hearts. Jack 10, 9 with hearts. And so, yeah, on the right table there, he folds to pot 
and it's like, well, I had the best hand and he folded, so what good, good did it do? But he had a lot of equity, whatever he had. Uh, let's go for pot here. He's obviously able to... Um... I actually think this... I mean, it's a very clear bet. This won't perform as well as it quote-unquote should because I think it looks extremely credible. If I didn't have like, if I didn't have a showdownable hand, like a if I had 10 higher or worse, it's really likely that I had a gut shot or some kind of straight blocker and that I would bet the turn, so. Um, 180. Kind of don't believe him, but the problem is I have to put in a lot of money if I wanna Nitty check back here from Jax. It's unfortunate. Um, I mean, I guess I'm calling. He's following through all of his bluffs, and now he's not betting like Queen X, so his value range got very narrow. So uh, good luck me, I guess. Queen six makes sense. Nice hand. But when the nut flush is part of his value range, which I think it probably is, um, it becomes more, I mean, blocks some value. But uh, I guess I should have followed the turn drawing dead. Call left table. This is supposed to be a give up on the right. With all my bad blockers. Let's do it. Let's give up. Okay. I don't think I could fold ace king yet. Not happy though. A very interesting river. Very interesting if he bets or if he checks. Um, <clears throat> As I block his main value bets. If he checks, can I make him fold Queen Jack? Can I make you fold Queen Jack? No, I don't. So I don't have Ace Ace. I always have King King. And here, I guess I call, but I'm not happy. Five five. Okay. Um, I'm just going to show down. I, I'm not feeling great about it. And he does like river a lot of flushes, but my lockers are so good because I block check raises the best. Um, Ace Jack 10. I think I just have too many. I don't know. I have too many. Uh, this is not a bet, but I think it works out well when I block the deuce. Um, obviously, I won the pot he was bluffing. But um, I think I just have too many hands like the one I have. And just generally, when someone's repping a very strong range, it's a little tough <laughs> to uh, make them fold. Let's put it that way. Um, I'm going to go small bet turn. And hot river, which is kind of thin by the river. 
Damn, seven nine got there too. I mean, now I small bet. Nine. Yeah, I think it gets too thin to pot. One at showdown with kings, that's good. He had jacks, jack, jack, nine. Uh, standard from him, of course. I think he's going to raise pretty well here. Like, I think he's going to raise queen nine for sure. He might raise seven nine. So I win when he calls, I think. Ace king nine he had. He might have called pot with that. Uh, here, I'm actually just going to keep blasting. Um, unblock four, five, six, seven, deuce, ace. Uh, and here, this is a weird one where I guess I bet turn and jam river or pot river rather. Oh, actually, I size up to pot there. Uh, might be a mistake. <sighs> he calls any jack x on the turn. He might call them on the river too. Flushes. He's calling a lot of them. All right. All right. I mean, I don't know if he would have folded that or not, but. The turn bluff is still, I think, good, although I could accomplish it with a smaller bet size. Um, he calls with, so sometimes when I polarize like that, I feel like he calls a lot. Uh, let's check call on the left. Although it's not the worst check jam because it turns play kind of awkward. Solver doesn't check jam, I think, with hands like this. It likes to have a made hand. But it makes some sense. Makes some sense. I don't know. Don't know about that one. I uh, don't know about this bet either, but that one worked. Here. I think a solver would check jam the turn against most sizings. Maybe not, though. Just think it's a jam. Uh, he had all of it. That's too bad. I mean, it was going in on the flop if I raised, but I have more equity on the flop than on the turn. Nice hand jungle. I wonder if I dislike my play there. No, I don't know. 40 on the river. Saying he has like six, seven. I don't know. I'm going to look him up. I don't, I don't care. Okay, hasties. Uh, okay. Results now. Oh, actually, the results are the same because I didn't update them. I was doing better. Let's check this back. Weird one. Or... Okay, hold this, all right, it's empty.
maybe I can check call turn and just, you know, save a little bit of money. But I think my play's okay. Jungle's actually been, I feel like, if my memory's serving me, he's been kind of tame on... I don't want to play this. I'm going to check again. And then here, I guess I'm going to fold. No, I'm going to call. Uh, here against pot, I can't raise. Although I think I win more often than not. Oh, actually, I didn't even see the extra straight getting there. Never mind. I take that back. I definitely can't raise. <clears throat> Why don't I believe you when I have 98? I mean, I have the worst blockers ever. World's worst blockers. I just don't think I get to bet on the left with anything. I mean, I could, in theory, you can bet a couple hands, but. Now the question is pot or check, or sorry, pot or small bet. Um, I think pot looks the most credible. And I block king, queen, jack, which is good too. He has ace, 10, he's not going to fold. Oh, we're deep. I can call this. Ah, <sighs> getting tired. Okay. King five three rainbow. He checks. I'm gonna start bluffing. I don't know how I feel about it. <clears throat> okay, I feel good about it. It's actually a pretty good betting hand. We're deep though. So let's go small. As my only sizing. This one could be a bet, could be a check. Problem here is like I wouldn't check raise seven eight. I guess that I might. I don't think I would check raise seven eight. But I'm gonna do it anyways. So you can't really check call. I mean, like, I probably had the best hand there, but he had a lot of equity. It's not going to be a great river calling hand. I don't know. What do you want me with there? 6-9 makes sense. Although he's probably calling a ton of hands there. If he's calling that.
Could small bet. I think pot's too thin. Weird one here. Um, I mean, I can't fold a king. Left table actually just feels too strong to check raise. I know that's weird. But... Uh, I'm actually going to check call the river. Repping ace ace four deuce, seeing if I can get him to turn a set into a bluff. Did not turn the set into a bluff. Yeah, Jack Jack. So like Jack Jack nine. That's why he didn't need to bluff. Um, so like, this is exactly why I don't like checking the turn with a hand this strong. You do want to check raise some nuts plus redraw, but that was like super redraw. I think it's better to bet and get called by hands that have basically no equity. Um, yeah, he had one out, so, and a few cards on which, you know, I'd doing quite well or making some money I should say I guess I'm gonna bet Queens here it's pretty thin when I block the Jack especially if I didn't block the Jack I'd like it more cool uh, he had Fives, which make a lot of sense here. Eh. All right, we get four bet. We could put in 16. I don't know what we're better off doing, to be honest. Let's just call. And actually, I kind of want to open rip. I know it's weird, but... I just think like he's going to check dry kings, and this way he's going to go with dry kings. He could fold some hands with good equity, too. Like, if he has eight, like, ace... King Queen eight seven or something. After this long, we want the jam for sure. I mean, we. One in the jam with no read, but the snap jam sometimes means we're beat. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. I mean, actually, he could, like, maybe if I check, he pots dry kings and stacks off. So, I mean, I could have cost myself there. I don't know. It's close between small bet and check call and pot. Like ace king, I think is good enough to pot. Ace queen, maybe. I don't know. I'm a little, uh, I don't know. Because I'm so tired today, I'm getting, I guess it's more hung up emotionally. Uh, I'm going to check raise the, the super, I mean, it's not a super straight draw, but. The open ender plus gutter. Yeah. 
here. Guess I bet. King 10, I don't know. A reasonable hand to uh, bluff with. But... Oh well. Uh, because I'm tired, I'm noticing myself more easily emotionally hung up on hands and like thinking slower. So that combination is not good. Fortunately, we're running super hot, so it doesn't matter. But speaking of which, I should update the numbers. Um, it seems like a fold. I don't know if eights, eights are probably fold, but not by a lot. We are up. I'm going to call it a hundred. It looks like it's a little bit under, but with rake, it's probably right. So we're finally having the, the session we dreamt of. Let's not get complacent, though. Um, I mean, I'm obviously talking to myself. You, you can get complacent if you want to. But one thing that often happens here is, you know, I'm up a lot. I'm tired. And that's a combination for just really sloppy play, essentially. Um, and that could be, you know, people have different types of sloppy play. It could be sloppy play through bluffing a lot. It could be sloppy play through calling a lot. Uh, it could also be lock it down mode where you just don't put yourself in any tough spots at all. Uh, let's Let's play poker. think I call here. Queen is good. 997 is not good. He's repping an 8. Could have kings. Could have some weird 5. I don't know. Um... I don't know, I kind of believe him. Here, easy call. Just want to think for a second about which rivers I'm going to do what on. I think I probably just check all rivers. Pot here is a little thin, but I did. Eh, it's not thin. When I small bet turn, he is not going to have that much. Okay. Bet flop, bet turn. I mean, three barrel spot, a ton of stuff makes sense. I'm going to fold this one, I think, uh, and beat more than two out of three times. That's why I'm going to fold. Let's just make two button folds, let them know we're locking it up. All right, not locking it up. Decent check raising hand, not mandatory by any means. <clears throat> um, check fold turn and then bluff river. I 
I think bet turn bet river looks a little bit like you check raise the nut blocker. So <clears throat> I think this line's more credible. Obviously, he might just have ace jack ten with a heart, and now he wins. But you know, um. <clears throat> I think I had the best hand, but it's pretty hard to get called here. Turn nuts. Was not calling a river bet, I'm pretty sure. So right table, check call, he checks, uh, pot's pretty thin, but I can get called by worse, I have equity, not going to get raised basically ever. And I can deny equity from one pair, so I think it works out. Okay, I call. It's pretty thin. Not the best bluffing hand or spot, but I like it. Uh, I do bluff turn with a lot of deuce X, so I have a lot of trips. Um, he might expect me to check raise some like 7-7, seven, seven, which I would, but... I have a lot of trips and like I can't check raise queen deuce. Mm, I guess I could. I could check raise queen deuce. Often does he have jack 10 here? So he's pretty close to. Um, Fifteen. I think this hand's supposed to be a bet, actually. Bet fold? Or is it too much equity? I think it's bad blockers to bet fold. Um, here I just show down my queen jack, I think. It's a reasonable bluff. It wouldn't be that bad to bluff. Oh. Okay. Now I small bet.
Um, against most players, I think the small bet doesn't work out well because they just call. I mean, okay, he's calling that. It's it's definitely not working because um, they just flick in calls with two pair and the straights and things like that all the time, and they just have too much of the too many of those flick in hands. If he's calling with kings, it's a terrible, terrible bluff. He had the king of hearts, but it kind of doesn't matter. It's not the worst turn raise to kind of deny equity, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, call here. I hate blocking a jack here. Okay, I win hit a queen or he had like you know a pair hit a queen with basically no outs um uh, that's another weird one Okay, jungle. <clears throat> um, it's almost a bet, but not quite. He's high. Okay, uh, let's check this one. I think Ray's turn is good. The problem is he might see through this. Yeah, I don't love it. He's not folding a set. I don't think I look like King Ten. Yeah. Set of sevens. Um, I think it's a bad turn raised by me. Like that's a thing that you do occasionally, but I don't think I should have there. A little too weak of a draw, and not like I mean he's kind of repping. When I I don't know. I don't know. I think we don't fold a deuce with this like rappy stuff. But now it gets awkward. I mean, maybe we should have raised the flop. <sighs> you can't raise the flop. Maybe I should raise the flop. Because now it's like we're losing the bluffs even. Both of us are. Um, I 
think it's too much equity. need to make him sweat with our deuce. Have some empathy, you know. Mm. All right, we have a pocket pair. You know what that means. It means, see, I didn't believe it, so I didn't say it. It's not a bad flop, though. <laughs> okay, not a bad turn. Uh, definitely betting. I think we're ahead of a check raise range, but he just checks folds. <clears throat> I was just trying to think. I mean, obviously never folding to a check raise, but I was trying to think if like we're behind or ahead, but we're definitely ahead. I'll check raise some very high equity stuff and then top two plus. Um, if we were, a hmm. I shouldn't even say, if we were a lot deeper, get slightly less clear, but not deep enough where Where that gets us under 70%, I think. Uh, or 70% equity, maybe, but best hand 80 plus percent of the time. Um, 90 plus, I, I don't know what I'm talking about, to be honest. I'm going to look them up. Then value. Bad look up. Okay. It's not the worst raising hand to then like chill out. Like raise flop then pot control. I like jungles had a decent batting average today against me on the river in terms of good folds and good calls and apparently good raises. Um, a lot of dry flush draws I check, but this one has a lot of turns I can jam really happily. Such as this. Mm, do I even want to, or do I want to check? Let him, like... No, I just want to... I have one pair. It's not like, you know... Uh, if he folds one pair, it's not the end of the world. Maybe lead river is a bad check. 
or I mean bad snap check, I should say. <laughs> um, doesn't matter. He had an error. He had a nine high flush draw. <clears throat> so he was drawing live. Cold in here. That's what would happen. Uh, I'm not folding this. Am I raising this? I think I might be. Base, I mean, I can have, I can't have much queen six or ace queen. So it's like queen deuce is top of my range. I don't have it that often. I'm um, actually bet term with that a lot. So if he has like better than this, he's reasonably likely to go for a check raise or small bet three bet. Then the question is, does he actually? Think that I would bluff like that, and I'm sitting over here trying to lock up a win, and I don't know the answer. It's a weird turn bet. <clears throat> A pocket pair. I have to say that I'm going to flop a set before the flop comes out. That's that's what makes it happen. With a club, this is an okay raising hand. Again, I don't have many raises on that board. Three bet. Um, let's bet this flop check turn. It's important to mix with a lot of stuff. Uh, unfortunate. I guess I fold. It's a little bit close. It's a little bit close. I think you won't believe me here. You believe me. <laughs> See, obviously, they're trying to value, so bad reads all over the place. There's our set. It's been long enough, right? Pretty sick to not flop a set for like 30 minutes. Uh, queen jack. Just trying to think. Um,
He has bet a lot on check two in these spots. I'm not going to do anything about it with this hand. Pretty reasonable check race, but actually it's a very good check race spot, but I just feel like he's going to be a little gun shy. And I also feel like he thinks I bet a lot of air on this five turn and check a lot of over pairs. So I think I get heroed here. Well, I shouldn't say it. I think I could get heroed here. It raised. Do I <clears throat> do I put the rest in or not? So one combo of five five. Uh ace five. He's got two combos of. Queen, queen, basically never seven seven. I think I put the rest in. Probably he's never gonna call. But whatever. It's just really, really hard to be beat. And I felt like he didn't expect me to play ace ace this way. So, yeah, queen queen. I was a very lucky river. And sort of accidentally played it perfectly. Uh, I think we're up one twenty. Trying to adjust this, and I'm moving it instead. Good call. Did I raise this? I feel like I did. But I was distracted. Okay. So this is a good bet if I did raise pre, and if I didn't raise pre, it's a bad bet. Cool. So, I mean, if I didn't raise pre, the whole hand is <laughs> silly. Zippy. It works. This is a fold. If he had three bet me here, I definitely would have flopped this out. Um, let's pop pot. <clears throat> No, I can't rep anything that made a straight on the river. Um, this is not supposed to be a bet with King King Six Six, but it's like I think it. I think it works fine.
problem is here, he doesn't have a lot of like pocket pairs, but I mean, it's really hard to be beat. Wow. And here he raises. <laughs> and the nut flush, he has, okay, 33 seconds. Okay, so Queen Jack, check seven, seven, six. Queen seven, Jack six. I'm just trying to think of the other combos. Seven six of clubs does check the flop. Check seven of clubs probably checks the flop. Queen jack of clubs probably checks the flop, but so do the jack sixes and all the others. Um, all right, man. I don't know. Nice hand jungle. Whatever you had, nice hand. I wonder what optimal play looks like there. Um, and I wonder how much it matters if I have, like, one of the blockers. Probably a lot. Awkward river spot because... I think he can have like ace king, ace queen. And he can call, so I'm not going to turn it into a bluff. Obviously, a reasonable spot to bluff. One ten. Okay, so he's repping. I'm gonna call. So I'll fold my jack high. It's been a real struggle to update that from 120 to 110. I probably just should have left it alone. Um, that's bad. And bet again. It's just really hard to have bluffs when I pot queen nine deuce deuce rainbow. <clears throat> Well, he has full house, so. This is probably not a four bat. This is definitely not a four bat. Um, we flopped something over here. They are deep. Bad turn.
Why am I slightly suspicious? I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be. Hmm. Okay. I think I have the best hand here, but it's pretty tough to get called by worse. And he could be check calling a lower straight. So. Um, he would have called that. But, I mean, that was a very specific kind of hand. I folded that. I don't think this is a three bet this deep. I'm a little suspicious here, but my hand's so bad. Um, let's check call this one. Go for the check raise. It's pretty thin with six nine, but I just don't think he's. I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm gonna rip this in. So fold out aces. And um, get called by queen jack nine eight and stuff. This hand, he had sevens, so he wasn't going to bluff. We're at the perfect stack size where I think like ace ace 10 folds. And then my line looks pretty weird. What is my value range? 4-4. Four, four. Jack 10 something, that's bad. Wow, I guess I was not going to fold out aces. That's very unlucky of me. Okay, jungle. Okay, jungle. That was almost his demise, but instead... Rub. Okay, that's a big one. I mean, actually, ace queen queen is better than ace ace ten. I think he might have folded ace ace ten. Actually, I believe I'm here for some reason. I have a good calling hand, but by this time I'm a believer. Why? I don't exactly know. Mm-hmm. 
pot or half pot? I think pot makes sense. Clear bluff, I think, by the way. With King Jack 9, 6, no clubs. No ace 3, 4. That was not what I was expecting. Queen deuce, I guess, but 7-5. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not doing anything with this. But very odd. Queen deuce. What was he what would he be bluffing with? If I have Queen Deuce, would I rip it in? I would. I don't have good blockers for that. Did he call me here? Folded. I'm suspicious, to be honest, but I mean, I was I have king high. He check raises. Okay. And check raise here. It's not super standard, but here, I mean. It's not that weird. Um, I think check call. No, everything gets there. Five seven, I feel like I could pot, but it's a weird one. Just unblocking king ten six three. I feel like betting is better than checking. He's going to play a lot of flushes this way. Is he going to... Play a lot of non-flushes this way too, I think. I don't know why. Well, I kind of know why. But... Cool. Me 
makes sense. All right, we have a set. I mean, damn, I screwed it up. We're not going to flop a set. Never mind. It's supposed to be we have a pocket pair, which means we're going to flop a set. That's that's what I needed to say. But once I once I blew the first line, it was not going to happen, no matter how I finished. Um, seems like too much equity, but I, I don't know. I'll just check. All my outs are like not thrilling. Well, that's not true. The flush outs are not thrilling because they're nine high. Not a gut shot. I'll just fold here. This is a call. This river. weird. I guess I just call. I mean, eight is a better, um, eight is a better blocker to bluff with. Not supposed to bet river. Um, next. No spade. I'm going to. I'm going to pop pot. It's pretty thin. Here's a little too dry via board for... That's probably too thin, but here we are. And it's very close to, to two thin. In limp pot, we just don't have a ton of flushes. Okay. Sitting out, I assume I'm at GG, but he's then played his, well, maybe he's trying to give me the button. Uh, he had... Jack Deuce with uh, six of spades makes perfect sense. Um, not sure. Not sure what we're doing. Kind of a funny spot on the turn. I don't have any gray rivers though. Let's just check call. It's not terrible to pot, but the problem is um, well, the problem's kind of obvious. <laughs> uh, the problem is like I have good equity on the turn, but then I pot and then the river is an offsuit nine and then I have to check and then he gets to put me in a tough spot with a lot of hands. Whereas now when I check and I call, regardless of the river, you know, he has something to be nervous about. I'm not gonna lead any rivers here. That would have been an interesting one. Too bad. Cool. All right. GG. 
So we won 80k, uh, which is right where we, right? We start with 22. Um, actually, no, 90. Is my guess with rake considerations. Yeah. Um, all right, I am going to quickly pull up chat to see if anything is super compelling, but I'm actually not going to stick around long because uh, I have somewhere to get to and I have a phone call before then. So let's see, go to the end. It's going fast. Uh, yeah, one outer once that. Uh, no, he could have... Um, Oh yeah, it was a one hour. That's pretty sick. Uh, for 50k. I guess I made a good fold. I had the straight flush. Okay, that's good. Six, seven of clubs. Clip top fold in a video. All right. Um... Uh, the queen's hand. All right. There's nothing um, standing out that I have to answer. So, um, <laughs> hungover Phil is the boss. Yeah. Uh, I can't really claim hungover. I, I barely drank, but compared to to not drinking ever, it, it was it was infinitely more. Um, appreciate you being here, keeping me company, keeping each other company, and I hope you enjoyed this show. Uh, Jungle and I. We'll not be playing in the very near future, I think. I'll talk to him. But, uh, oh no, did Jungle bluff me? <laughs> but um, uh, subscribe so that when we go live next time, I mean, I will announce it on Twitter and here. But I will, uh, yeah, subscribe so you get notifications when we go live again. I'm not sure exactly when that will be. Um, but I will see you then. I'll see you before then for... Uh, other videos and or other streams. I'll be streaming some World Series of Poker online this uh, summer. Take care. <laughs>